right. So welcome back to another PD Active class. My name is Stephanie Camella. And this month is our first class in March. We are going to continue what we started in February, gate work, gate related work. And the way I approach gate related work isn't necessarily more walking. It's breaking down the skills that we need for more efficient and smoother walking. So things like hip extension we talked about in February. We talked about hip rotation. We talked about reciprocal body patterning. So we're going to continue on some of those themes just to drill them in a little bit more in our bodies and have them be a little bit more reactionary. If you haven't already, go ahead and stand up. And we are going to start standing with some foot mobility warm-ups and some standing drills. I'm just going to scoot this back, make my uh, field of view a little bit bigger. But of course, before we do any sort of movement intervention, we're going to do a body scan to see how our bodies are feeling and moving at this moment in time. We'll do our movement interventions to see if any of those movement interventions made a positive change in how I, we feel, perceive, proprioceptive, and actually move. Okay. So starting standing here, feet underneath you. Close your eyes if you feel like that helps you hone into your body. Good morning, Alana. Hi. And just take note of how your body is feeling, a general sense. What's the vibe? Where is your weight distribution? Is it in the left foot, the right foot, the forefoot, the back of your heel? How about the tension in your body? Is there tension in your neck, your shoulders, your knees, your hip, your left pinky? And then what about your breath? You find yourself holding your breath either on the inhale or do you find yourself suspended in no breath? Do you have an even flow in and out? You give yourself a bob in place, bending through the knees, giving yourself a bounce, letting the body shake. We talk about this at the end of class, that postural sway, allowing energy to move through and not be stagnated in rigidity in our body. So again, just bobbing, how easy does that bob come to you? Do your arms flail, does your belly jiggle? Those are all good things if your arms are flailing and your belly is jiggling, yep. And then go ahead and walk around your space or you can march in place and as we always do, take note of your gait pattern. One or two things that feel alarming to you. And I'll just note some characteristics of gait that I like to pay attention to. So if you uh, don't know what you're looking for, you can ask yourself these questions. How loud is your gait? Where do you look when you walk? You look down, you look forward. How long is your stride? Do you heel strike? Do you toe strike or do you flat foot strike? Meaning what part of your foot touches the ground first? And we've talked a bit in February about arm swing and natural arm swing is an indicator of hip rotation. So if you have hip rotation and or arm swing. And then go ahead and come back to your spot. Hopefully that self-assessment wasn't too overwhelming with me narrating. So one or two characteristics of your gait that you're just noticing the quality of, the characteristics of those things. And we're gonna see if the quality of those characteristics improved. Grab a chair if you need to for balance. We are gonna do a little foot stretching, kind of foot mobility warm up. So we're gonna take the top of your foot and peel it backwards so that your toenails are down on the floor. Okay. And depending on how mobile your foot is, you may need to be a little bit further back. And then rolling to the pinky toe side of your foot and then the big toe side of your foot, so rocking from side to side. And this is getting the stretch in your toes to be able to point your feet, right? To push off that leg behind us, right? We need to be able to have push off through the toes. And then also some stretching in the front part of your ankle. 
from when we do the heel sit on the floor. So rolling side to side. And if you have a certain aspect of that ankle that needs a little bit more love, like for me, the outside of my ankle feels a little bit tighter usually. And then bring your foot back to where it came from. And we're going to go into Barbie high heels. So you're going to pull your foot super, super into that high heel, super stilettos, and then lower the heel down, super heel up, lower the heel down. Okay. So going super high and what this is allowing us, I'm going to do a little, a little close up of my feet. What this is allowing us to do is to get this angle here, this extent, what's called extension in your toe your big toe. So if you notice that you're lacking extension in your toe, you're probably going to do something like that, or maybe rolling kind of inward if you have bunions or something like that, but trying to make sure that we're getting the roll over the front part. Mm -hmm. Good. And then the last one we're going to do for our feet is called a toe twist. So this one gets a little weird. Bear with me. So you're going to come up into the high heel. Sorry, internally rotate your foot. So rotate it inward. Come up into the high heel. And then you're going to twist the heel inward. And that is going to separate your big toe from the other toes. Okay. And then you're going to kind of hold it and then reset, shake it out. So you're going to go internal rotation, high heel, twist. Like you're squishing, I'll say something, not necessarily a bug. And then separating the toes, yeah? Good. And then shake it out one more time. Internal rotation, high heel, twist, and separate the toes. Good. And then pound through that foot. Give your foot some, <laughs> my dog didn't like that. Pound through the foot, give your foot vibration. When we have vibration through the feet, it increases our proprioception, our understanding of where that limb is in space. That's what we're trying to give our body, a better understanding of where that foot is. When we have better sensation, better proprioception, our bodies feel safer, less rigid. All right, let's do that same thing on the other side. So we're gonna go toenails back, use the chair for balance if you need to, and then rolling from pinky toe side to big toe side. Yeah. And again, we're getting that folding of the knuckles. It'd be like if you had, if your feet were hands, it'd be like doing that. Right? That's tricky. It's not easy. For some of you, especially if this is new, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so painful. We're just going to keep it dynamic, move through it. Don't be in too painful of a spot at one time. I promise you, the more you do this, the better it gets for you. Okay, so a little bit every day. All right, and let's go into those high heels. So planting your foot, rolling over, and then just letting the heel drop. Working on big toe extension, especially this, this joint here where the big toe meets the ball of the foot. And like I said, on the other side, sometimes if they were lacking mobility there, we're gonna sort of sickle the ankle out to the side. We'll, we'll sort of be walking maybe like that or actually lifting our leg around. So we wanna make sure that we keep the mobility in that big toe for as long as possible. If you have arthritis there or whatever, just do what you can, okay? And then toe twist, so we're gonna go internal rotation, turn the foot inward, up on the high heel, put some pressure in those toes so that when you twist, kind of the friction of the ground is what separates the toe. Is that making sense? And then shake it out. So internal rotation, high heel, twist, and you should be getting more of a gap, at least in that joint, maybe the others. Okay, one more time. Internal rotation, high heel, twist. Mm 
little stretch for the big toe and then release it out. And then go ahead and stomp that foot. Give yourself a lot of vibration through your left foot now. That proprioception from vibration is so, 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 so good. Yeah, there you go. Kenlin, even a march. I like it. Two more. And last one. Excellent. Grab your chair or a wall. You're probably going to want a chair or a wall, even if you think you don't need to for your heel raises. It gives us a little bit of lean forward so that we can work into the intrinsic muscles and not have to worry so much about balance. So we're going to start with the feet almost close together, about hip width apart. Go ahead and draw your heels up off the mat. Test the waters. Be like, okay, I'm not going to like lean on my chair. I'm just using it so that I can focus on strengthening and not so much about balance right now. And then lower down nice and slow, just tapping your heels. Don't actually put weight through your heels and then come back up. We're going to do this 15 times. That's three, four, five, uh-huh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh-huh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Nice job. Beautiful. Go ahead and just step away and give yourself just sort of a little roll through, walk around, step tap. You're like, oh yeah, wow, my ankles and my feet feel so activated right now. So when Steph tells me to do something with my feet later, boom, my brain is there. There is no mystery of where my feet are in space. <laughs> Go ahead and make your way down to the mat. You can put your chair out of the way for now. Make your way down to the floor. I've just at this point given up on using mats because I always end up rolling off of them. Huh, Del. Whenever you're on the mat, bend your knees up, have your feet wide, and start with the holding pattern, letting your knees go from side to side. So for Barbara, she was asking about doing the class that involves going from like babies to standing. So what that's called the motor development progression. The progression that babies go through from infancy to toddlers as they learn to walk. And I use that often, especially for neurological conditions, using that progression as a template in the order that I do my exercises because built into that template at each stage, each milestone, there are certain skills strength, coordination, and mobility requirements that are established in each stage, which help us in the later stages. That's the idea of it. All right, so feet flat underneath you. We're gonna work on a little bit of our supine. This would be like babies laying on their back. I'll draw that stuff in for you, Barbara, because um, it actually goes really well with the theme anyways. So if you remember babies, when you're changing their diapers, they're like, ah. Oh. I have a toe. So go ahead and lift your leg up and grab onto something in that leg with your hand. If you can touch your toes even better and like play with your toes a little bit. Like babies are like, whoa, I have my toes. That's pretty cool. And then bring that leg down and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, now the, the position of happy baby makes a lot more sense, right? Like why is it called happy baby? Yeah, because they're getting cleaned up. <laughs> Be happy too. Nice. So we're doing same sided hand to same side leg. The so same side hand to same side leg in that exploration of your toes. And your eyes are going to those toes too. So we're getting a little bit of eye movement too as we go side to side. Now let's go cross body. So opposite hand to leg, which is going to ask for a little bit more mobility, right? And then bring it down cross body. And again, if you can touch your toes, great. But if that's not in your wheelhouse today, you can go knee touch too. something that you're crossing the body and creating that cross body connection. Good. Let's go two more. Uh-huh. And last one. Beautiful. And then release. Legs are going to go long down on the left, arms up by your side. Let's bring your right leg up towards the ceiling and then cross it over the body. And allow your torso to twist just a little bit. So your hip's going to come across and over. Beautiful. 
This right leg is going to come back up towards the ceiling. Notice you have to push through the ground a little bit and then return that leg down to the floor. Okay, so we're just starting to learn how to roll over now. Leg comes up. It's almost as if the weight of your leg pulls you into a twist. Mm -hmm. And then up and then lower down. Go ahead and work through that side to side. Don't feel like you need to keep up with me or stay back with me working from side to side. Mm -hmm. Starting to roll. Now, at this point, we haven't figured out that the shoulders need to also roll. We're just doing the lower half. Lower half is getting a twist. Your upper half is pretty much staying flat on the ground. All right, finish up, even out your sides. I'm just going to do one leg to even out, but you do you. Beautiful. We're now going to do the upper body only. So lower body is going to stay heavy. Right arm comes up towards the ceiling. You're going to curl your head and shoulders up just a little bit. And as if you wanted to reach down and grab something on your left knee, we're going to curl up and come up onto your elbow. Whoa. Yeah. And then bring it back down and release your arm all the way out to the side. Same thing on the other side. Left arm comes up. We curl our head and shoulders off of the mess, a little bit of ab work. The hand comes down. It's as if you had an itch on your right outer knee. Okay, you might have to post up on that elbow a little bit and then bring it down. Let's work through that a few times. Now, if posting up on that elbow feels a little bit out of reach right now, it's like, oh, to get there, you could also just roll over onto your thigh, okay? And like tap your thigh that way, okay? There's lots of options here. Something that gets you sort of starting to roll, and I like that elbow pose just because it starts to bring in a little bit more of what's called a level change. We're starting to become more upright. Yeah. Good. Nice. Now take something, continue your rolling practice. Let's just bring the eyes in a bit. Look at something over on the right side. So when you actually post up on the right elbow, you're looking at something to the right side of the room. And then you might look at the ceiling. And then you look at something on the left side of the room when you post up on the left elbow. So conscious eye gaze focus, eye lock. And then try to hold that lock on that object for as long as possible until it's like, okay, my head's on the ground. I'm gonna look up towards the ceiling. And then I'm gonna look over my object, keep my eyes locked on that object as you roll all the way back to the mat until your head touches the ground. Yeah. Let's do one or two on each side. Finish on the side that you did not start with. Bringing your eyes into the play as well. Your eyes are sort of the guiding light of getting up. It's like you would a baby, right? Like you're, the baby's not like, I'm gonna roll over on my side. It's like, I see that thing and I'm gonna get it. And then we're thrown down. Nice job. We're gonna fully roll over onto your side. You now have almost two ways that you can do that. You can do it with your leg pulling you over or you can do it with your arm pulling you over. I'm gonna let you decide, you're your own human, your adult, make a decision, roll yourself over onto your side. Uh-huh, great. Bend your knees in just a little bit. You can lay your head on your bottom arm. If the sh shoulder mobility is a challenge there, you can bend it in or use a real pillow. Remember, I always say there's all my pillows. Yeah, keep them close by, all my pillows right there. So if you need to pull that pillow in, pull it in. Top arm, stretch it all the way forward. We're gonna circle around, rotate the torso open towards the ceiling. Here's another twist. Your eyes are gonna go to that thing on the back, on the other side of the room. And then they come up and around and they come to the front part of the room. And then they come and they look at the thing on the back side of the room. And then they come and they look on the front side of the room. Okay, so bringing eyes into the equation with the movement. Again, this is where the, the nerve aspect, I mean, all movement is neuro movement. Let's be real, that was kind of probably clickbaity name for the class, but like all the, the specific neuro aspect of the neuro movement is bringing your eyes and your sensory system into play. Good. One more time. Excellent. From here, we're going to roll all the way forward so much so that we start to fall onto our stomach. Let your hips fall and come into your belly tummy time. Okay. We have our elbows sort of out to the side and hands sort of in front of us. This is helping us get a little chest lift. So you're pressing down into the ground to lift your heart open. And again, babies in tummy time, they're like, oh my gosh, there's this whole world around me that I didn't even know existed because I was lying on my back the whole time. And then lower down. 
press through the forearms and the elbows to lift. Looking around the room, I spy with yourself. There's like something over that you're like, oh, puppy, I want to touch the puppy. Bring it down, bring it up. Eyes look around the room all the way. See if you can almost like see your feet behind you maybe, huh? And then bring it down. We're gonna go two more. Press, extend, looking around, looking up. Mom and dad are tall up there. Here we go, last one, looking up. We're just big babies, aren't we? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good, good. And then return down. Now you're gonna roll onto your side facing me again. We need to do the pinwheel on the other side. So we're gonna draw the knees in, quick transition, push off the ground. Swing your legs around so that you're lying on your side, still facing me, but now you're on your other side. Fair? And if that was too much, just roll around. You're going to face away from me. Bend the knees in. Make a pillow with your bottom arm or use a real pillow. Stretch forward. Eye gaze on the thing in front of you. Sweep the arm up and around. Eye gaze on the thing behind you. Sweep forward. Eye gaze on the thing in front of you. Swing around, eye gaze on the thing behind you. Swing and swing. And up and swing and swing. Always finding that thing in front. Lock and then quick change, lock behind you. Let's do two more. Last one. Good, so nourishing all that rotation. Good for your organs. We're gonna slide forward, slide the legs up and roll into the belly again. I'm gonna turn a little bit so I can face you. So we have those hands underneath us. We have that little press up, looking behind. What if we were to lift one arm and swing it back and then bring it back in? Yep, lift another arm, swing it back and then bring it back in. A little sneaky shoulder mobility here. So swing it back. Maybe you even bend to bring the, the knuckles of your hand into your low back. How's that shoulder mobility? And then bring it home. Behind. Good, just giving you lots of layers. You decide what is right for you. Uh-huh. Nice. Maybe you follow your hand as far as you'll go. Bring those eyeballs to the edges of their socket. Mm -hmm. One more time on each or finish up so that you're even on both sides, yeah? Love it. From here, we're gonna roll up to the side again, push off, come into your sideline. Bring yourself up into your twisted sit. So we have our legs kind of lit. However, they landed and both hands on the mat. Okay, the hand that's furthest away from me is gonna slide out again and your ear's gonna come. Yep, push through the hand that's closest to me to bring yourself upright. Uh-huh, slide out, ear comes to the mat, turn your world sideways. Good, now when you bring both hands in, I want you to look up on something on the horizon again, find your other object, the next thing. This class is much better when you have a house with clutter, huh? When you have lots of things to look at. <laughs> Reach, turn, turn your body sideways. There we go. And up. One more time. Excellent. Working that transition of pushing off the floor. I know that gets hard as we go along here. So we're going to have both hands underneath us. We're going to go for push up. In the push up, same thing with the head turns. Your ear is going to come down to the ground. And then your eyes are gonna come up on the horizon. Okay, so it's the same motion vestibular wise, but a little bit different muscles that are working. There's three and we're gonna go for eight. Four, uh -huh. five, six, that's it team, seven, and eight. Excellent. Swing the legs around. We're going to be switching around to the other side again. The knees are bent in. The hands are sort of offset. 
We're going to be working on laying down on your side, so coming up to your twisted prop. Yeah. Slide out, ear comes down, turn your world sideways. Push through both sides, eyes up on the horizon on your new thing. There you go, Susan. Bring it down, bring it back up. Nice. Now I'm, <laughs> this is kind of a weird thing, but I'm a very sensory person. Like textures, feeling for me is very like soothing. And I find that rubbing my hand on the carpet feels really good for some reason. And I mean, for some reason, I know the reason. When you're stimulating your skin, it gives you more information of your about your environment around you. It's like a it's like a safety thing. It's like, oh, I know this carpet is safe and soft and easy to work with. Bring yourself up. Anyways, I just want to share that experience in case you notice that in your own self. We're gonna go for those push-ups. The movement of the head is the same. We bring it down, ear to the ground, push away, eyes come up. Yep, drop down and push up. One time, one of my um one of my clients, she had, she built her house from the ground up and it's this beautiful and well-designed. Her wallpaper had texture on it. Like parts of her wallpaper were like fuzzy, like kind of velvety. And I was just like, I'm just going to touch all your walls. Is that okay? <laughs> Lots of tactile <laughs> stimulus in that house. I was like, oh man, this is too much for me. Last one. Good, press up and stay up. Hand that's closest to me is gonna rainbow yourself to bring yourself on to crab, into crab, time check. Wow, we're doing good. All right, in your crab position, it's a big stretch through your shoulders to figure out where you like your hands so that it's not too much of a stretch, but it's definitely giving you something. Uh -huh. And then let's go ahead and flex the spine. Let your shoulders sort of splay. Let your belly drop in. And then push through the heel of the hand and stick your tail out a little bit so you bring your heart to the ceiling. Eyes go up. Eyes are going to come down onto your pubic bone or your belly button as you flex and let your shoulders shrug. And then turn yourself inside out. Bring your eyes up. Chin drops down. Pressing up. Chin drops down. Pressing up, chin drops down, pressing up. Last one here, chin drops down, pressing up and hold. Knees are gonna fall off to one side, just the knees. You can keep your hips down. Yep, knees go off to one side and then knees go to the other side. You're probably gonna start walking forward in your hips. Because we know hip rotation equals forward propulsion. Yeah. I'm getting really far away from my hands. Built in stretch. Reset yourself if you haven't, if you've slipped forward. Let's do that again. We're going to do legs out to the side, hold. Nice. Slide your. Ooh, let me think about this. Bring yourself back up, right? <laughs> Let's go legs off to the right. Everyone go legs off to the right. Uh-huh. We're going to go left leg open. So now you're in butterfly. Right leg closed. Right leg open. Left leg closed. Left leg open. Right leg closed. The very conscious rotation of the femur joint. Mm -hmm. Two more. And last one, let's have your legs go off to the left, or sorry, your knees go off to the left. And then see if you can bring yourself a bit more upright. If you kind of need to walk around to the side, that's fine. We're gonna be in what's called the Z fit or something like it. And again, if you need to post through the hand, you can. Okay, so we have this shin in front, the shin in back. I'm picky about this foot laces down. That's why we stretched that ankle earlier. Okay, so the top of the ankle, the front of the ankle needs to have that mobility. From here, hip rotation. So we're gonna press the hip to opposite knee pit and then settle your hips down on the ground. Uh-huh. If you are finding this position not accessible, 
as I say every week, you can sit on a pillow. That'll bring you up a little bit and give you a little bit more space in your head. If you do not need this outrigger hand, don't use it. See if you can be upright and move that pelvis. No hands. Mm-hmm. Nice. Good team, good. Lots of hip mobility here. Now, use that outrigger hand if you need it. We are gonna bring this leg behind us and then sweep it with a straight leg, hold it in front for cross-legged. Don't get too comfortable, we're gonna reverse it. Lean off to the side if you need to. Kick your leg out in front of you, straight leg. Straight leg, straight leg, straight leg, straight leg, sweep it back, come into that Z sit, and if you can go no hands, go for it, okay? So working on that transition, we kick back. Sweep, hold in front. Hello, sweetie. <laughs> Sweep forward, don't kick your dog, around and back, no hands. Okay, one more time, we're gonna finish in cross-legged, we go up. Sweep, cross-legged, nice job. Now what happens when we bring this leg out to the side, your uh, left leg, cross, uh, sorry, probably lean out, it's gotta untuck from all of the mess and then come into the sit. Let's do our femur rolls first and then we'll do some of that swapping. Hip bone to opposite knee pit. Settle the hip back down. Mm -hmm. Hip bone opposite knee pit. Nice. God, I literally have a picture of, I think how old was my niece? She was maybe 11 months just sitting. She's just like sitting like this, like <laughs> sitting in Z that I captured it. I was like, it exists, it happened. All right, no hands if you can do it, no hands. How much movement exists without the hand support? Excellent. Good, and we're gonna do that leg swing right here. Maybe start with the hand out, just to get the full range of motion. So we're gonna kick the leg out long. See if you can get the out first. Straight leg, sweep it. You'll notice that there's kind of a push off, the hip goes heavy, and then we fold the leg in. And again, trying to do minimal hand assistance, okay? So we go out, lean, straight leg, sweep it around, get the rug burn on your heel, tuck it back in and sit upright. Okay, move through that as best as you can for a few more times here. I like to say that best exercises are the transitions between exercises where the real function comes in, right? Nice. And if you can do that, no hands, still keeping the straight leg. Wow, super power to you. And then finish in your cross-legged position. All right, cross-legged sit. We're just gonna stretch forward for a forward fold for a moment. Maybe breathing into your hip. Mm-hmm. Good, and then come on up. Now we're gonna bring our, our legs into some sort of side sit position. So if you wanna be in Z sit or um, side sit, which is a little bit more stacked, that's fine. We're gonna start working our way into four points or quadruped. So from this position, we're gonna have our outrigger hand here and we're gonna be reaching forward for that, for that hand to come out too. So this is just, again, the transition from a side sit to hands and knees. So uh, basic, but super important for getting off the floor. So starting to level change from seated position to something a little bit more complex. We've already primed some of the weight bearing through our hands with the push up. So you can kind of see how the skills and strength that we did previously is gonna help prepare us to be more successful in this position. We'll do one more of those just pushing up the hands and knees. And I know that you're not fully hands and knees. Things are still sort of interesting. Switch the legs around. Again, we already practiced that switch. Outrigger hand's gonna help you push off along with this knee and then reaching forward with your free hand to get into hands and knees this way. Push off and that way. Yep. Good. 
And remember, like you looking at that object that's just out of reach, that is what is giving you this desire to come into hands and knees. That desire is going to be so much more powerful than your brain saying, okay, push off my hand, push off my knee, engage the core. No, you just say, I want that. Go for it. Okay, one more time, come up into hands and knees, stay there, organize yourself, maybe turn if you need to, to look at me, see everything. We're weight bearing through the hands and now we're weight bearing through the knees, through that whole joint. Okay, we're gonna go for a cat cow, but we're gonna do it my version, slinky cat cow, which requires some undulation. So you're gonna start with your tail, super lifted, wide sit bones, eyes are up, Collarbones are wide. Your heart is sort of dropped. You're just going to start by tucking your tail first, rounding your spine. One vertebrae at a time is going to start to round, round, round. Your eyes will come underneath as the last thing. Your eyes will stay there. Release your tail into extension. So widen those sit bones and feel the wave come through your spine. At some point, your eyes are going to start tracing the floor, tracing the mat between your thumbs and then up the wall in front of you. Tuck the tail and round. The eyes will start to drop. Trace the wall, trace between your thumbs, trace down towards your knees and up to your belly button. Extend the hips. Eyes will follow as the last thing that pulls through. Couple more, round and tuck, draw under. Unravel and release and draw up. One more time. Under and release. So you come up. Nicely done. Sit the hips back, maybe in some sort of child's pose stretch or something that feels restorative. I'll just say, hey, look, there's that ankle stretch again in your heel sit. That's why we need that front ankle mobility. And then we're going to draw ourselves forward again to put some weight through the hand. All right. We are a baby again. And we see a toy in front of us that we want to get, but we haven't figured out how to crawl yet. We do know that this pumping motion of hips to heels and then forward over your wrist might get us a little bit closer. We just haven't figured out what it means to lift a limb yet. It's like, ugh. I'm getting closer, kind of. It feels like I'm getting closer, maybe not physically, but neurologically. Your eyes are forward on that toy. Desire is pushing your energy, not conscious. I'm going to sit back on my heels and bend my knees, and then I'm going to come forward and pull with my hands. No, it's desire. It's I want that toy that's pushing me forward. We're going to do one more time here. Come forward over your wrist. Bring your hands to the center of your chest and reach your arm forward towards your toy. Oh, I want to grab it. Yeah, and then replace your hand. Reach your other one forward. You're like, oh, I figured out how to lift a limb. Nice. Alternating your arm reach. Good. Two more. Last one. Amazing. Pump again. Forward, back. Keep your hands narrow. As you come forward, reach your arm. Hand comes back, hips come back. As you come forward, reach the other arm. Pump, reach, back. Beautiful. If you've already started to lift a knee up a little bit, you're like already there. Do you see it's prime? Maybe you start to step with the opposite knee and then sit back. So if you need a visual, it's right here. We come off the heels, we reach and step. Whoa, slow motion, that was hard. We step back and sit back, okay? So there's some power out of the kneel position. Cool. If that felt like a big jump neurologically or like coordination wise, it's probably because we skipped a couple steps. <laughs> so maybe we'll revisit that. Let me know at the end of class. Let's do one or two more. Last one. 
Beautiful. Sit the hips back. We're going to end up being in a split kneel position. Some of you may enjoy using a chair for this one. So I'm going to show the non-chair version and then the chair version. So you can try it. And if it doesn't work, you can go to the chair. So we're going to come forward onto the hand. Big step forward with the foot. That's a lot of mobility. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then return that foot back to where it came from and take a seat back. Same thing on the other side. You're going to come out of the power, out of the block, and then through. When I say out of the block, that's like swimming blocks or track block, right? Think back to their sport. For those of you who may want a little bit more space for hips, it will look like this, hands on your, on your chair. Okay, so you're going to sit back on your heels, and then the knee comes forward, foot comes forward, okay? So you have a couple options. Go ahead. You're still continuing to work for that. Yeah, we're gonna do two more and I want you to finish with your right foot forward. Whatever version you're on, right foot forward, right foot forward. Your right hand is then gonna go on top of your thigh and you're gonna look over your right shoulder. Uh-huh, bring your right hand down to the gra ground, right foot and right knee goes backwards again, reset yourself into your hands and knees. Sit the hips back. We're gonna go left foot forward to left pinky. Left hand on your thigh. Look over your left shoulder. Center, reset, step back. Go ahead, continue right foot to right pinky or right foot to the right corner of the chair. Your right hand goes on your thigh. Look over your right shoulder. Center, reset. Hips go back, forward. I want you to feel that power coming out of your knee bend, out of the heel sit. Good. Do one or two more, and I want you to finish with the right leg forward and your right hand on your thigh. Right leg forward, right hand on your thigh. Mm -hmm. No matter where you are. Good. From here, press yourself up into your split kneel position. And again, you're either using your chair or not. If you can let go of the chair at this point, now is a good time to do that. I'm gonna adjust my computer so you can still see my head. All right. From here, you have hand on your thigh, yes? Left arm is gonna stretch forward. Sweep the bicep by your ear. Rotate the torso behind you, but I want you to continue looking forward. This time, don't rotate your eyes behind you. We're gonna sweep the arm forward. Sweep the bicep by your ear, rotate to sweep behind you, but keep your eyes forward. Keep going here, sweep, rotate, release. And you can use this hand on your thigh as a little bit of leverage. Good, it's like your torso is slipping through two planes of glass. Good, one more time. Uh-huh, beautiful. Now, if you need the chair, use it. Otherwise, try not to, hands on your hips. Put that knee underneath you. Good. Switch to the other side. Switch it back. Switch to the side. Switch it back. Switch to the other side. Uh huh. Now, can you do it without your hands on your hip? Maybe there's a little reciprocal hand to leg. There you go, Lori. Good. Eyes are forward. Because when we walk, we want to look forward. Don't run into those millennials who are texting on their phones walking. Yep. Last one with the left foot forward, please. Eyes are still forward. Left hand on your thigh. Sweep the right arm forward, brush your bicep by your ear, rotate the torso, but keep the eyes forward. That's the challenge. I think that's harder than actually turning your head. Like the eyeballs are locked, but the body is sort of moving around the eyeball. Our head is orbiting. <laughs> not the other way around. Uh-huh. And again, you're rotating so much. Use your left arm for leverage. Like you're trying to fit your upper torso through two pain, planes of panes of glass. And last one. Excellent job. Great. Bring this knee back underneath you and go ahead and face me if you're not already. Where are we at? We're gonna bring our thumbs out in front of us. 
about shoulder width, maybe a little bit wider. Thumbs up, yep. And we're gonna keep our head still this time and just the eyeballs moving from side to side. Good. The exercise is the eyeball movements, not necessarily the kneeling. So you can do this in any position, seated in a chair, sitting on your heels, standing, whatever. Side to side eye flicks. Again, no moving of your head. So for me, I know that if my ponytail moves, I move my head. Yep. Two more. Last one. Good. We're gonna do cross knee touch with the leg coming through. Eyes are gonna stay forward now. How quickly can you do this? Are you a little bit more agile than before? Now that we don't have a chair in front of us, or you can do this with a chair too, I should say that too. You can do that with a chair. Try to make a cross body connection like we did at the beginning of class. Yeah. Good, two more. Last one. Legs go underneath you, high kneeling position or whatever position you wanna do the next one in. One thumb in front of you. You're gonna keep your eyes locked on the thumb this time, the one thumb and then swish your head ponytail or move your head side to side. And you're trying to turn your head as far as you'll go. I should say as far as your neck will turn. When my words get weird or I stop talking or I trail off, it means I'm really focusing on these drills. Like Steph, you're still teaching a class. You're not by yourself right now. Yep, two more. And last one. Very nice. Hand to knee touch, bringing one leg forward. Same, better, different, worse than before. A little more agile, a little more balanced, not sure. Yep, one more time, love it. Finish with your favorite leg forward, okay? Tuck your back toes, we're gonna get ready to stand up. If you need to push off something, that's fine. We will go over that another day. And then go ahead and set together. Bring yourself to the middle of your mat. We still have a little, like a, just a few more minutes, but I just wanna bring us up to stand to kind of complete this process here. We are gonna do one more drill for our eyes. Again, fingers gonna be in front of us. Get a little closer. These are called pencil push-ups. Usually we use a pencil, but we can use our finger, about the same. And you're gonna have your hands start a little bit away, maybe two feet in front or arms distance. And then keeping your eyes locked on your hangnail or your cuticle, whatever, bring it all the way in as close as you can get it to go without going double vision. And then slowly bring it out a little bit and then bring it back into that threshold of right at or right before, maybe right over double vision. And it does not need to be fast. You don't need to be like, rrr, rrr, rrr. like especially if this is new for you. I haven't actually done this in a, in a while. I haven't been doing my drills, I'll be honest. So I have to take a little bit of time to like let my eyes calibrate as they go to the inside of my face. You don't want to be cross-eyed. You don't want to see double. Clear vision of that hangnail. Just kidding. I don't have hangnails. Maybe one or two more of those push-ups. Very good. Amazing. And then maybe blink your eyes a few times if that felt like it was overwhelming. And we're gonna do a standing march now with that cross pattern here. And if that single leg balance just feels a little too much, just feel free to a little bounce cross body keeping both feet on the ground, all right? But if you have that single leg, go for it. Eyes are forward. Alana, looking good, girl. Nice job. Okay, two more. Excellent and pause. Walk around your room. 
or march in place, walk around your own, and take note of those one to two characteristics of your gait that you had at the beginning. Did they change? First of all, just notice if they change. And then we'll assess if it was a good or a bad change. So if your gait is quieter, your strides are a bit longer, your foot articulation, you're maybe going more like midfoot strike, definitely not shuffling. Eyes are in front of you or down. Hopefully they're a little bit more up. And then maybe you have that natural arm swing that's indicative of hip rotation. So hopefully there was at least a change and hopefully in a positive direction. <laughs> Bring it back to your center. Stand with your feet underneath you. If it feels right to close your eyes and you don't feel like it's gonna knock you off balance, go ahead and close your eyes. Notice any postural sway or energy is flowing through you, not being stagnated. And then give yourself that bounce that we did at the beginning. Shoulders loosey goosey, a little flashing in your belly. Maybe a little side shifting, a little swaying, things are jiggling. Very good. And rest. Go ahead and bring your arms up towards the ceiling. Inhale, push the heel of your hand up towards the ceiling and release your arms down. <laughs> Excellent job, team. Nice work. Well done. I'm going to turn off the recording if you have any feedback or questions for me, um, we'll, we can 